All right, guys, welcome to another video of Geo's Amigos. Man, today we're going to have a spicy one. I just found this uh, video about Terrence Howard backing up Cat Williams and the reason why he left Hollywood. But before we get into that, I always pray for you guys uh, that support this podcast. So that's why I have my QR code up right now. Um, I pray for you and I'm always going to be praying for you, even the ones that I can't sow or support in that way. Um, you're still getting blessed in the name of Jesus. Uh, but those of you who feel led to support, it's up here. Real quick, though, you can also stream my podcast on Apple, Spotify, anywhere that you can listen to podcasts. It's up here in the description of this video. I usually leave it in the comments, too. You need some books. You need some journals. I always write in mine. Actually, uh, I have my new one up here. It's really cool. It's Psalm 36, 5. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. It's a really cool one. I just started journaling for the month of January. So if you want to journal everything that's been happening uh, in your life, uh, like me in the past two, three years, I've been journaling. So yeah, if you feel led to journal, I, I got some journals. I actually create them myself. But yeah. So that's enough of the advertisement. <laughs> We're going to go straight into the video, guys. Uh, I just saw this video about Terrence Howard backing up Cat Williams. If you haven't seen my video, I actually did a video about Cat Williams exposing Hollywood, talking about God. It was crazy. You got to watch the video. I'll have it in the card in the description below. But yeah, I haven't seen this video, so I'm really excited to show you guys. In the title of the video, it says why he left Hollywood, too. And if you've seen that movie, Iron Man, he was in that movie. He was with Tony Stark. You know, he was like always getting after Tony. So I really liked his character. But when the second part came, it was a completely different guy playing the same character. And I'm like, what? I really find that annoying when, you know, there's a certain character that plays in a movie. And then when the second movie comes out, it's like com someone completely different. I always wondered why he wasn't in the, the future uh, Iron Man's. So I guess we're going to find out with this video. So let's just check it out. There should be some kind of sanctions against that place until they make they make some type of change. You can't take the vertebrae out of your back just to fit inside of someone's ceiling. Mm -hmm. You have to stand up full and proud, stand up erect. Martin tried to put me in my first dress. When he had to go on his hiatus, he tell me, Kat, when I come back, I need you. You my young partner, you my brother in comedy. When I come back, just promise me that my next movie, it'll be me and you. We gonna do it together. So it looks like Cat Williams gained another supporter, and it's none other than Terrence Howard, who is now spilling the tea on how he got fed up with Hollywood trying to put him in a dress. According to Terrence, Hollywood is really out here trying to strip black men of their masculinity, and he's throwing shade at the industry, claiming they accused him of being hard to work with just because he wasn't down for playing certain kinds of roles. Now, we've all heard the whispers about how Hollywood is allegedly pushing this agenda to make black men look more effeminate, and heavyweights like Dave Chappelle and Cat Williams have been calling it out, saying black actors are pressured to wear a dress on screen before they can level up in fame. And while some fans are now saying this is not such a big issue as people are trying to make it, it looks like Terrence is standing his ground. In fact, word on the street is that Hollywood slapped Terrence with a difficult to work with label just because he turned down a role where he was asked to be in a dress. But Terrence is over being blackballed by the industry and he just spilled the beans that he just might quit acting for good because Hollywood's agenda got him sick. That's the stuff you've got to watch. See that's why friends. you got to clear this stuff up. You've got to watch the stuff that they put out there right. you know because they're just trying to make money. Mm -hmm. So you've all probably heard by now that Cat Williams reignited the the conversation surrounding the rumored agenda in Hollywood about black male actors being pressured to wear dresses on screen before they reach yeah. that A-list status. And now some sources are claiming Terrence Howard is one of the many talented actors who got blacklisted for saying no to the dress. Now Terrence has been a talk of the town kind of dude for some time and that's because his personal life drama often took the spotlight away from his acting. But let's not front on his talent though. Back in the early 2000s, Terrence was on the verge of being the next best leading man. His Oscar winning performance in Crash had folks thinking he was going to be the hottest actor of his generation. Jump to 2008, Terrence showed up in the Marvel blockbuster yeah. Iron Man as Rhodey. 
And even though he's holding down a side gig, he's cashing in as the highest paid actor in the movie. But fast forward to 2010, and what do you know? Don Cheadle steps in as yeah. Rhodey in the Iron Man sequel. Word on the street is Terrence got hit with a massive pay cut offer, like 50 to 80% for Iron Man 2. But here's the kicker. We never found out if he said no or if Marvel pulled the plug on him. Entertainment Weekly spilled the tea back then, saying Terrence might have had a temper issue and was a handful on set. But Terrence didn't take that narrative lying down, and he claimed he got tagged as the angry black man on purpose, especially after he started speaking up about Hollywood's agenda to emasculate black men. Now, this whole Hollywood trying to push a more feminine image on black men is not a fresh idea, and many black comedians and actors have publicly spoken out about it. Take Eddie Griffin, for example. He was one of the OG oh, voices wow, yeah. throwing shade at Hollywood for making black actors and comedians wear dresses on the big screen. Eddie spilled the beans on Hollywood's rumored dress wearing agenda all the way back in 1999 that guy was so funny, man. I actually forgot about him, but he was so funny. In his comedy, Foolish, where he not only starred, but also wrote the whole script. In Foolish, Eddie takes on the role of Miles Foolish Ways, an up-and-coming comedian hustling to make it big in Hollywood. Now, here's the kicker. There's this unforgettable scene where the studio mm. big shots are trying to talk Foolish into wearing a dress for a role and telling him all the A-listers have done it. So what do you think? It's never been done before. Three lovable drag queens driving cross country, helping middle America solve its problems. Y'all want me to wear a dress? This isn't a throwaway role. You'll be carrying the emotional energy of the movie. Man, it, it, it's, it's not that I don't appreciate the offer because I do, but... All we're asking you to do is to take the script home, read it, and make a decision. Foolish. There's a lot of money involved. In it. We're talking a major motion picture here, Foolish. Now flash back to 2006 and Dave Chappelle spills the tea on Oprah's show sharing that he experienced a wild incident where he got pushed to wear a dress for a movie role with Martin Lawrence and the way he described it sounded like a scene straight out of Foolish. He put this dress on and it, huh? What? The prostitute? Nah, I'm not doing that. I don't feel comfortable with it. That should have been in a discussion. What? You don't feel comfortable with it. I mean, it's a hilarious bit. All the greats have done it. So fast forward a bit when Kevin Hart was asked to comment on Dave's story. And he just shrugged it off, saying that kind of thing never happened to him. Definitely have ran in a, to put on the dress. Uh, I mean, you know, you, you have to have you have to have boundaries. You have to have limits that you refuse to cross. Uh, you know, for me, I know what they are. But just a few years later, Kevin ends up oh. in an SNL sketch in Dang, a dress. Look at that. That's what Crack Williams is talking about man look at that they're like oh he's never been asked well let's ask him <laughs> and look at him that's so cringy too the way he's like hey, like uh Dress, and it was like a game changer for his career. Suddenly, Kevin's popularity and success yeah. skyrocketed. Allegedly, all thanks to that dress wearing stint on SNL. And you guys, you gotta get, you gotta see that. Like nobody really, like I knew Kevin Hart from Soul Plane, and that was it. All of a sudden, he just like he was in so many movies. He's been pushed, and you know, it just makes sense, guys, because you know, Cat Williams is, I think, is way funnier than Kevin Hart, and Eddie Griffin was really funny too. But they're not as pushed and why is that these funny guys and they don't have these roles like there's something deeper going on and that's what the that's the message man they're just telling you and yeah but the dress saga doesn't stop there. Cat Williams jumps into the mix, claiming the whole dress deal is tied to whether you choose to dance mm. with the Illuminati or not. So, oh. you know, some of us make choices. I think it's not a biggest choice um, for others. I'm saying um, at the end of the day, Kevin doesn't have to worry about what people are going to say about him wearing a dress because of the long line of dress wearing people before him. <laughs> so now we have Big Mama's house one, two, and three. Yeah. I've never seen Medea in a pantsuit. I think she wears dresses. <laughs> so now I'm saying, why are we picking on poor little Kevin Hart? Because it was his turn next. Okay. Okay. Some of us are against the Illuminati, and we are against the Illuminati at our own detriment. Mm. When people are against the Illuminati, then they get punched in the face all the time. The press hates them. 
and nobody likes him. Back then, most folks yeah. brushed off Cat's words as- Yeah, I actually remember that. He was like really like the first one that I've seen and heard that actually said like straight up said Illuminati. I was like, oh dang, he's actually- Because I remember years ago, I was like just starting getting into like what is really going on in Hollywood. You know, all the rituals and all the back behind the scenes stuff. I was just like, wow, is it really true though? But, you know, Cat Williams, seeing that, I was like, oh, man, this has got to be something. He's he's in he's in the inside. He knows what's up. Why would he just blurt out Illuminati? You know, like there's nothing good coming out of that, you know, when you're saying the truth. As some wild conspiracy theory. Fast forward to today and mm -hmm. people are revisiting his words and saying there might be some truth to what he was throwing out there. Mm -hmm. So during Kat's recent yeah. appearance on Club Shay Shay, yeah. Shannon Sharp asked him about Dave Chappelle walking. Yeah, you, you guys you gotta watch my video, man. I just broke down all throughout the parts of him talking about God, talking about uh, the parties that he would go to and everything. You guys gotta check that out, man. Check out the video. I have it in the card up here in the description below and the comments probably away from a massive 50 million dollar deal shortly before he revealed that whole dress incident and you won't believe what cat dropped turns out he had to pass up on some fat contracts too all because they came with strings attached now i've had to turn down 50 million dollars four times four times just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole i was telling you about <laughs> right because uh, p diddy be wanting to body and you gotta tell him no Come you on. got to tell him no I, I did <laughs> it was so funny man you gotta watch the video and you got to tell him no you got to tell him no i did see i got the receipts for everything i'm telling you that's why i can yeah, say yeah, i'm so freely but cat didn't stop there he also claimed that martin lawrence tried to put him in his first dress for big mama's house and when cat shut that down brandon t jackson swooped in and took the role martin tried to put me in my first dress when he had to go on his hiatus he tell me cat when i come back i need you you my young partner you my brother in comedy when i come back just promise me that my next movie it'll be me and you we're gonna do it together we're gonna do some buddy cop i said martin you got my mother word go do what you gotta do when you come back i'm in your movie don't trip i don't need to see the script or nothing you know we get in that office and this fool pull out big mama's house too i almost died and i gotta read this script from all these good white people where this nigga want me to get in a dress with him and i'm literally saying to everybody why is he in a dress again you already played the old lady as an FBI agent. We can play anything now. We can be playing a dog catcher this time. Why do we need to be in a dress? And I get so mad, I say, you don't want me. You want Brandon T. Jackson. And that's who they went and got. Twice I said it, they went and got him. Just like I'm telling you, I had that other dude's work. I had all of it. Now, circling back to Terrence Howard, reports yeah. recently emerged that this whole dress thing was one of the main reasons Terrence turned his back on Hollywood. All right, let me fill you in on the latest interview with Terrence when they asked him about the buzz going around that he got the boot from Iron Man 2 because of anger issues and not being the most cooperative on set. Terrence shut that down real quick and made it crystal clear that he wasn't about to let Hollywood bosses tell him what a black man should look like on the big screen. So according to Terrence, black actors are getting pushed to embrace a more effeminate vibe if they want to hit the big leagues. He said, my daddy taught me never take the vertebrae out of your back or the base out of your throat. I ain't raising sheep, I raised men. Stay a man. Everything is androgynous, you know? The more successful men are now the effeminate. And then in another recent interview with Revolt, Terrence doubled down on his thoughts with Hollywood having a bone to pick with strong black men. And he said that only white men are allowed to be both strong and non-threatening at the same time. The man has been demonized, Terrence said. With the new formula, most men are made to be effeminate and not have their power or sense of strength. They allow white men to be able to be strong. But when it's black men, it's seen as a threat. He also added, I don't want to remove a few chromosomes to fit into someone's story so i feel they need yeah. to expand their stories to allow men to be men and simultaneously appreciate a woman's beauty now yeah. as you can imagine the internet is serving up a buffet of opinions on this whole saga some folks are quick to throw around the label conspiracy theorists at terrence and cat williams and they're also saying we have way bigger problems to worry about than actors wearing dresses someone said as a 42 year old black man the last thing i'm worried about in my life 
life is comedians wearing dresses. Rap, hip hop, and hood culture are way more threatening to my life than this. And another one added, putting on a dress is for comedic value. Medea, Shanene, Nutty Professor, White Chicks, Big Mama's House were all hilarious. Making people laugh is what it's all about. Someone told people the narrative of a dress being used to emasculate men and y'all ran with it. But on the flip side, yeah, I get that, but there's a deeper message behind this. There's a darker world behind this. But let's check out what they're going to say. There are many fans giving Terrence and Kat some major props for pulling back the curtain on Hollywood's shady side. And they're convinced this whole dress thing is more sinister than it seems. Yeah. One person wrote, Terrence Howard. That's what I was just saying is absolutely correct this ain't no conspiracy they all know the agenda and another one added i'm with terrence brothers are still enslaved and don't seem to care all because of the almighty dollar they are definitely trying to emasculate our men and our men are cool with it but let me know how you feel about terrence howard's comments on the dress controversy do you think there's really an agenda behind the way hollywood portrays black men leave your comments down below i actually want to hear terrence say it. let me see if i can find it though terrence All right, I was trying to find uh, something about him talking, but like this is uh, someone who's trying to break into the entertainment industry. This is Oxford Union. Let's just check this out. And so my question to you is, what advice would you have for someone who's trying to break into the entertainment industry, whether it be acting or music? Uh, also, I got a copy of his songs on here if you want to listen to it on the way back home. Well, you just <laughs> said it right. You said break into the business. How do you break into something? Oh, we'll enter the business if that. No, 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 you had it right. Because they don't want you in there. Everybody else wants that job. They're trying to keep you out. So you have to break into the business. Okay. How do you break into something? It's a little cunning involved in that. And there's a little violence involved in that. It's aggression involved in breaking into something. So there's passion involved in that. And that passion is what's going to drive you wherever you're supposed to be. I can tell you, you know, go over to, you know, to Fifth and Dunbar and it's going to happen for you over there. It's not going to happen there. It's going to happen for you when you actively work in concert with your desires. So you want to be an actor? You don't go to Saudi Arabia. You got to go to L.A. or, or, or New York in, in the States. And you, you do your time there. And my thing is, I have no toleration for rivalry not black eyes and bloody noses for me it's life or death when i'm in that ring and that ring is the set and the stage for me so i'm coming in there to dismantle you i'm coming in there to take away any falsehood that you have that you were carrying yourself with i want to shake that up with truth and to where you don't even know your lines afterwards that you're just sitting there so if you can't come in ready for life or death, you think it's a black eye or bloody nose, you will lose your life in that game. You go in and you destroy them and you break into the business however you have to. Wow, that was a good one. Yeah, let's go to, to you. My, my question is, when you go to play parts or uh, uh, decide on what exactly you want to play in a movie or a series, do you look for specific things in uh, a character that you're going to portray or do you just immerse yourself into the character and uh, see how it goes from there? Yeah, I don't do all that little tricky stuff about who oh, I'm going to go and this character reads this or any of that stuff. I sit there and I try and look for what resonate, resonates, what resonates with, with, the, with the character. Oh, that, you suck. I hate that. <laughs> um, I'll get the other one. <laughs> <laughs> it's, if the truth is in the character, if the ch character is written well, you don't have to do anything. All you do is have to sit there and say the words. And somehow in the words, it's going, it, just little bells like playing Candy Crush, little things just pop up out of nowhere and you're just doing it and you, you get lost in it. If you allow yourself, it's just a river, man. You know, get naked and ride in it and jump out when you get cold. But don't be afraid of the rapids. Don't be afraid of the rocks. You know, you just, you know, jump out of the airplane and say, to hell with it, you know? Thank you for coming. I wanted to ask a question. You seem to like um, be sitting on a wealth of knowledge and something you've been working on for, how you put, 40 years. I was going to ask, how are you living day-to-day -day life knowing that the rest of the world is doing it, quote-unquote, incorrectly? Well, it's been 40 years of me dancing on this thing. For 40 years, I was told I was wrong. 
For 40 years, I was told that, you know, the platonic solids and all those were the solids. You know, um, you have to have faith in self. You know, all of this, I can sit up here and tell you guys that, you know what, I'm the smartest man in the world. I figured out what da Vinci and none of them could do. The truth is, you really want to know the truth? This may be crazier than, than the fiction. Tell me. The truth is, I, w I woke up inside my mother's womb at about six months of age. I woke up inside of there, like boom. I don't know what had happened. Maybe my mother went through some trauma or whatever, but I woke up and I was like, oh God, I'm here. I'm here, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget. Don't forget. This is truth. I would think about something and this would come over. And I thought, I didn't know it was my hand. I thought it was a friend. I had my whole name for it. Inside that womb, you were conscious. You woke up, because with, with our son, our son Kieran, when he was about, my wife was six months pregnant, we would put the light on her stomach and he would follow it and push on it. And then we'd put the music and we'd put it all the way over to the other side and he would crawl all the way over to the other side of the stomach and push at the light with the music. So what I'm saying to you, you are conscious inside the womb, but we have no common frame of reference. But I remember, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget, because I knew I'd been here. Don't forget, and you know what I didn't want to forget? This flower of life. Because apparently I'd been interested in it at a given time. And I came out and I was born, the first thing I thought about when I was five years old, I was, I was obsessed with bubbles. I was like, why does a bubble take the shape of a ball? Why not a square or a triangle? And I would go and try and make square or triangle of bubbles. And we could never do it because it turns out everything expands as a sphere and everything contracts in geometric form. You drop a pebble into the pond, it expands in a perfect sphere unless there's something in the way. The moment it hits the edge of the shore and starts to come back, it's the contracting waves that hit the expanding waves that creates the initial geometries. Everything expands as a sphere, everything contracts. What I'm saying and what I tried to tell you guys earlier, this is not your first time, it's not your first rodeo, and it won't be your last rodeo. Don't panic in this life. You can actually, there's no sense of death. Everything goes to sleep and it wakes back up again. Refolds and unfolds, refolds and unfolds. And if you're, if you're, if you're wise, if you're careful, because you can remember conscious moments in your life, can't you? You can remember moments when you're like, wait a minute, I'm in a bigger space than just this little body right here. You become fully aware of everything around you. And if you quiet yourself, you can think about those things. Well, apparently I did that at the last passage because when I came into this life, I woke up, remember, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget. And the first thing I did was worked out the flower of life. When I was six years old, I started making these pieces. What Da Vinci tried to do at 80, I did at six years old because I had been working on it perhaps from a past life. Now, I'm not trying to say I'm crazy or it is reincarnation. Okay, he kind of lost me there. <laughs> but he is spiritual, at least. I can tell, you know, six years ago, this was uploaded. Nation or anything, but we know that energy does not die. Energy just reboots itself and reboots itself. So we are eternal. So stop panicking, thinking your life is over. You've done this trillions of times. You'll get good at it and we'll be perfect one time if we get conscious, but we have to get conscious. Because I can either say I'm the smartest man in the world that I figured out what nobody else in the world could figure out. With Aristotle, with, with Plato, Come on, talk about Pythagoras, God. all of them tried to figure this out, but I know I am not smarter than these men. So I know that there's something to the consciousness of carrying things through because the information and the knowledge that I have, I didn't go to school. I had a 1.6 grade point average graduating from high school. It's because God gave it to you, man. It's all about God. That's the truth. Because I had other things to do. But this information kind of educated me along the way because I was born into it. And now I have the pieces to follow it. And hopefully Chris and... Um, Maybe Oxford and some of the, will do some of the vetting for these things and we can change the world. But if not, I'll keep doing it and I'll do it in the next lifetime. If not this one, in the next lifetime after that. <laughs> There's no, it's not like that, man. It's we're in this lifetime and then eternal life with God or without him. Just remember, and another thing, don't forget, you know, you go from positive to negative, everything polarizes positive to negative, then more than likely with each lifetime, male to female if the universe is consistent i think it is great <laughs> thank you for that question 
So he is spiritual. This was uh, this was back in 2018. Wow. He's got some spiritual sense to him, but it's God, man. It's just God. And when he was talking about form, you know, in the womb and all that, I was thinking about Jeremiah. It says Jeremiah and Jeremiah 1 verse 5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. And then there was another one that stood out to me. Uh, Psalm 139 verse 13. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. And, you know, you know, we all kind of know this one. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. So he just needs God, man. He's got a sense of it, of what's going on. I don't know, really know what his life is, spiritual life. But it's uh, it's all about God. I pray that, um, you know, God touches him in a way where he starts to know the truth. Because he feels like he knows things. But um, I didn't hear anything about God. I didn't see this whole video. But um, just, by, just by him talking, he's not referencing God or Jesus or anything. So I think that's what he's missing. He's missing that truth. But I just pray that he gets to know God in the way that I got to know him. And I pray that you guys too. Uh, this was very interesting. Uh, something that I haven't done before. Very interesting uh, video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, we're going to have some more videos coming up. Stay tuned. Jesus amigos, I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, that you become the salt of the earth, the light of the world. Let's change the world, guys. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.